Well, in another election, both presidential candidates on the island nation of Madagascar are claiming victory after an election runoff. However, only a small percentage of the results have so far been declared by the electoral body. Two former presidents battled in Wednesday's second round vote, Marco Avalomanana and the man who ousted him in a 2009 coup, Andre Rogelina. The nation is hoping for a peaceful outcome with no repeat of the political chaos from almost a decade ago. Madagascar's electoral body says results from 5% of all polling stations showed Rogelina, whose candidate number on the voting list was 13, leading with 57%. Provisional results in the runoff are expected before uh, the are not expected before the end of the year. Now, for more on the Madagascar elections, let's go to journalist Raisa Yusuf, uh, who joins us live uh, via Skype from Antananarivo. Good evening, Raisa. Good evening. Now we know there has been some update. Can you just get put get us up to speed? What is the latest? Uh, like you said, some partial results are starting to come in, but it's only a small portion of polling stations which have been processed, 20% uh, exactly. Um, it's too early to tell now which candidate is likely to win because it's just only a small portion. But so far, candidate Andrzej Zoel is leading in front of his rival, Mark Kravalmanena. What's important to notice is that voter turnout is on the decline now. Uh, in the last presidency in 2013, 50% of the voters had cast a ballot, but this time it's only 47% of people who turn out to vote, which shows a disengagement of the Malagasy populations for politics. Uh, these two candidates have dominated the political landscape of Madagascar for more than 10 years. And uh, I spoke to some of the voters, and they told me that voting for one or the other wouldn't make a difference for them. Yes, no, we know this is a, ca a country where there has been a lot of turbulence, and of course you can understand the skepticism. What have been the reactions up to this point, with these two now again starting to kind of uh, uh, str uh, fight over the results even when they're not over? I mean, so far here, the situation is still very calm, very peaceful. Uh, both candidates have reacted, and they seem very pleased and very confident after the vote. Uh, Mark Ravalmanana said that change is coming. He said that his rival couldn't beat him, even with all of the money in the world. And Andre Zuel kind of said more of the same, that he was confident that he was going to win. And obviously, uh, because of the, the partial results show that he's leading, uh, his camp is very confident as well. Um, so far, we had uh, some reactions. One of them from the head of the EU Electoral Observation Mission, Christian Preda, who said that um, he called both candidates to be calm, and he said that we really, really should wait until the results are announced, and we will get significant results in early January. Now, Raisa, we know that those two men have actually held power in um, Madagascar. What case are they making for, you know, for themselves? What is it they could do that they could not do when they were presidents? I mean, actually, both of the men have been criticized because they seem to have based their electoral campaign more on their personality, and they focused a lot on the history they shared together. So, for example, Mark Manana uh, kept accusing his rival, Andre Zuel, of deposing him in a coup in 2009, and Andre Zuel defended himself, saying it was a popular uprising, and that actually he led a series of protests because of what he called a, dictator a dictatorship from Mark Manana. So they do have some policies. Mark Manana says that he wants to implement a strong uh, presidential regime and also promote decentralization. And his opponent, Antra Zuel, said uh, that he wants to turn the coastal town of Tamatar into the new Miami. Okay, Raisa, thank you very much for your reporting. Uh, that's uh, Raisa Yusuf uh, reporting live. You Skype from Antananarivo in Madagascar.